Hi there, Andrea. So we have another set of essays from you. Wonderful. Let's see what you did. This is the flowchart about tea. The given flowchart illustrates the process to prepare different types S of tea. Overall, white tea is the easiest to prepare among the proposed subtypes, whereas the preparation of green, oolong, and black tea needs several additional steps here. Okay, that's actually nice, other than those little errors. The first stage is common, not in common. The first stage is common to the four-sided teas, and this involves collection of fresh leaves, which will be sorted and cleaned. Similarly, the last step is shared, and it includes the process of dehydration, which uh, creates S, the compounds that will be used to prepare the liquid beverage. Uh, good. All right. I like that. Conversely, the main difference, the main difference in the production process, uh, mm, not consists. Uh, let's see. What word do you look? What word are you looking for here? Conversely, the main difference is in the production process. Um, occur in the middle stages. That's how I would have said this. Occur in the middle stages. For for the green tea, this is a unique stage of vapor cooking. Green tea vapor cooking. Okay. Uh, in opposition, that's the wrong word. Um, in contrast, as regard the green, oolong, and black tea, the, the stages are more complex and include the adding of chemicals to alter coloration. Uh, they don't add, no, they don't add chemicals. It's just fermentation, I think is what you're referring to, uh, which doesn't mean adding anything. It's just a natural process where bacteria form, but not color. Moldering the shape of leaves, alternatives among pan frying, steaming, or frying, and are from, okay, I don't know where this color thing is coming in, then I'm really confused. Okay, uh, and a fermentation of two possible lengths, so S. Finally, once obtained, no, finally, once the final mixtures are obtained, all the mentioned tea, except the white quality, can, variety, not quality, can be dried again in order to add flour and fruits to the compounds. Then they are left to cool. This is the last stage before arriving to the scented tea. To conclude, a multiple step process is required to make tea and allow people to enjoy such delicious drinks. Such a delicious drink. All right. Um, I liked a lot of your grammar. Um, I definitely liked this first section here. I like this actually quite a bit. thought it was very good. I feel like you kind of um, you kind of took a different route here. So this whole section for me, I wanted a little different. I thought that your presentation of it was rather confusing and you overcomplicated it. And not only that, but you made too much effort of changing around the vocabulary. Now, I know you've heard that you're supposed to use novel language, and that's true. However, what does that mean? It means that you shouldn't copy this language, okay? However, everything actually in the chart can be used. So rather than talking about um, moldering and alter coloration and, you know, all of that, rather than saying that, you could have just used the words that you found in here, and that would have been more appropriate. Okay? Um, I felt like you didn't, re you kind of indirectly talked about white tea, but I don't think you ever mentioned the steaming process. I thought you just mentioned the sorting, and cleaning and then the drying. Um, so I felt like you kind of disregarded it. And then I also, um, I wasn't super, ha I wasn't really super happy with the way you explained these. I just, like I said, I thought that this all was a little overly complicated. Um, I absolutely agree with what you did here, talking about the first step and the last step being universal. So I thought it was a great idea. I thought that what you could have done instead is the following. You could have said that the three T-types also share the second step, okay, uh, which is withering. After that, they um, break off considerably into different processes. Uh, the simplest one of which is that of green tea, which is pan fried, steamed, or fired, following which it has one of two options. It can be either rolled and shaped or it could just be directly dried. Okay, and then you're done with green tea. 
Then you can say that oolong and black tea also share some steps, but with some uh, differences. So both can be rolled. However, oolong can be shaken in a basket or, uh, and black tea can uh, be cut for a different type of black tea. Okay. After this step, both are fermented, but Black uh, tea undergoes a full fermentation, whereas oolong only goes a short fermentation. Um, they are both dried, as with all the other teas that we've mentioned, okay? But oolong tea first is pan-fried, um, and black tea is fired in order to, to dry. So that's how I would have done it. Um, I think it's an easy way to do it. It's clearer that way. So it's just some suggestions for you, okay? Uh, let's take a look now at this, uh, moving companies to regional locations. Okay. Over the last years, governments have been encouraging industries to move their venues from city centers towards the rural areas in order to meet the demands of the public opinion of limiting the worrying conditions of the large cities. All right. As the sentence goes, it's kind of on the heavy side because you have all of these, uh, uh prepositional phrases. So, um, I would like to see a little lighter, if that makes sense. So let me see if I can lighten up this sentence a little bit. Over the last years, governments have been encouraging industries to move their venues uh, from city centers towards rural areas uh, to uh, alleviate the worrying conditions of the large cities. Okay, so I got rid of all of this of, of, of to alleviate the conditions of the large, the negative conditions of the large cities, for example. So that's one suggestion. This precaution set has, not certainly, so this precaution has two facets, one positive and one negative, which will be discussed in the following essay. Okay, this is fine because they didn't ask you if the benefits outweigh, they just said, what, they, what are they? And you've clearly said that you're going to discuss both, so that's fine. On one hand, it is generally claimed that transferring workplaces outside cities could be a determinant factor in the reduction of the overcrowding, which is a progressively increasing issue of the modern metropolis. Due to changes in the locations of the major companies, a limited number of workers will be traveling to capitals in order to commute to their workplaces. For example, a large section of employees commutes every day to the cities with their vehicles, causing traffic congestion at least twice a day at the entry and closing time alike of offices. At the entry. Well, we don't really call it entry time. We call it uh, opening time, maybe. Or just how about like at the beginning and the end of the day, perhaps? Maybe more accurate, more natural sounding English. This is a major concern for local inhabitants who could perceive the impre... No, that doesn't sound right. Who could have the impression of being, not perceived, but have the impression of being hindered uh, from moving around within carefully dispelling their own cities. Therefore, by changing working places, governments would help large cities to be less clogged than, with an A, not E, they are currently. Okay. Um, there is a problem here that we'll talk about uh, in a minute. On the other hand, the decision to place companies direct distantly from cities could induce such societies to fail because they might not tolerate the cost of the process. In fact, employees who have their residency in the metropolis would be compelled to leave their home places daily, change around your word order. And consequently, they could request their bosses, uh, they could, no, they could ask their bosses to add fringe benefits. For example, commuters could ask for a full refund for the public transportation or furthermore, those workers who decide to hand the resignation, hand in the resignation, could claim golden parachutes. By attempting to satisfy such requests, companies would experience plummeting profits and will be doomed to failure. Okay. To conclude, moving the venues of companies towards regional locations uh, has the city decongestion, one word, no S, and resident satisfaction as principal advantages. Uh, this is the wrong spelling of principle. Nevertheless, this could be a cost-demanding process which can lead companies to fail if they are not able to face such expense. Okay, it's very nice. Um, a lot of the language is good. Some of it is not entirely accurate, but that's okay. We uh, went over those issues um, 
throughout the essay, so I think you are familiar with what those uh, problems are. Uh, instead, I want to talk about something else which is a little more problematic for me. Let's look at the task again. It says, what are the benefits and drawbacks of this? It looks like in your paragraph you focused on one benefit here and then um, one drawback here. But it clearly asks for multiple benefits and multiple drawbacks. Um, so a, an examiner looking at this would be would probably say, oh, well, it's not completely developed, or, oh, it's only partially developed, and that would um, considerably lower your task achievement score. So while you've really developed each of these ideas, in fact, it's not answering the question as it was asked. Okay? Um, so that's what I want you to be aware of here. Okay, so from what I could see, your exam is coming up tomorrow. So uh, I want to wish you lots of luck. I don't know if we have any more essay corrections together. Um, if you need us in the future, then please don't hesitate to let us know so that we can help you further. Uh, I do wish you the best of luck on your IELTS exam. Please let us know how you do, and we wish you lots and lots of good luck.